what wire do I cut? Uh, you have to cut the red one. Oh wait, no. No, you want to cut the blue one. Blue like Bravo. Red like Bravo. Yeah, uh, like Bravo. Okay. Uh, what is that? Which word did you cut? Red like Bravo. Sir, Bravo isn't a word. Oh, fuck. Hi, my name is Ikeno Ofoa, product developer for CNC Labs. And I'm Daniel, a mechanical engineer here at CNC Labs as well. And today we are here to talk about our CO2 laser project. I think right now our code name is the Ultra Beam. Things might change, but I kind of like it. Fits in line with the laser beam line and uh, it's ultra, it's the next step. It's bigger, it's better, it's faster. This is a bit of a project that's been in the works for the last almost year now, ideating and prototyping as you can see behind us here. So we're kind of here to just share some updates based on what new developments have happened, status of our prototype, what we're anticipating for the future um, for this product. Yeah, so we could just bring it down to the basics, like what is a CO2 CNC laser? It is essentially the same as your CNC router, the long mill, or the alt mill, a CNC router, but instead of a router on the end, we have a CO2 laser. When you use your laser beam with your long mill, you're essentially turning your long mill into a CNC laser, right? But it's a CNC diode laser. And all we're doing here is we are replacing the diode laser with a CO2 glass laser. And how that works is the glass seals a little bit of gas, usually CO2 with a mixture of other gas. And once you send some direct current through that, it gets charged and releases a light. A light in the form of a infrared laser, invisible to the human eye, but we can bounce this light off a few mirrors and through a focus lens, and we can actually engrave and cut things. And the reason why we wanted to use a CO2 glass laser is because we can produce a lot more power than a diode can. Our laser beam diode laser is seven watts of optical power, but our CO2 glass laser will actually produce 70 to 80 watts of optical power. And that's just about 10 times more power. Because this is a dedicated CO2 laser CNC machine, we get to run things a lot faster. Uh, we're worried about different things. We're trying to hit different metrics than you would hit on a CNC router. We can aim to move a lot faster than you can uh, even on the alt mill. I believe the alt mill can reach probably about four times faster than the long mill, mm -hmm. right? But this machine will be able to move 10 times faster than the long mill, right? So even then we're playing with higher speeds uh, when we get to dedicate the form factor to the functionality of laser engraving and laser cutting. Yeah, so we can jump in a bit, I guess talk about mechanics like you're kind of saying. Um, so traditionally on a CNC router, you need beefier parts because there's some structure required to your frame. Everything needs to stay very rigid. Um, on a CO2 laser like this, like I kind of said, the main focus is speed and kind of agility. So you can see in our prototype, a lot of the moving parts are a little bit more lightweight and the systems that drive uh, the X and Y axes now use pulleys. Um, just taking advantage of a higher speed and acceleration that we can get with that. And that basically allows us to do very fast like raster engravings, much faster line cuts, um, and just generally a easier to use faster machine. That kind of keeps up with the increased CO2 laser cutting power that we now have. At this point, we're pretty familiar with CO2 lasers. Uh, we've been using them in-house to do our in-house manufacturing. So anytime you see an acrylic part, part of your long mill or accessory system, that part is cut in-house on our CO2 lasers. So we're very familiar with the form factor. We're very familiar with the performance that we're aiming to get out of this. And now we just wanna make it more accessible for the hobby market. We believe right now, in order to get a large upgrade in power, and speed and form factor, you usually just have to pay a little bit too much in the hobby space, right? Or you have to go overseas where you're not gonna get any type of support. We're just trying to bridge that middle ground and create a more accessible machine, which a large bed size, high power, high speed, and you get our support backing you up. So the rough specs that we're looking at is about a work area of 24 inches by 36 inches. We're roughly looking at about 75 watts of optical power and with a max speed of about 600 millimeters per second. So we're making this update right now because we have our first working prototype and that's like very exciting. So over the next couple of weeks, we are going to jump into some very intensive tests to make sure that we can kind of learn as much as we can from this prototype before we push the design to a more pre-production ready uh, level design. It's gonna be exciting and Daniel will kind of explain what type of tests uh, we're gonna be running and what we're kind of looking for. Yeah, so I kind of explained the concept of a CO2 laser 
in a more simplified sense of you're strapping a CO2 laser on to moving gantries and CNC machinery. So it is kind of true, but like you mentioned, we have a kind of elaborate series of mirrors that were used to align the beam to a focused lens and, and then end up cutting or engraving into your material. Getting that beam to the end material exactly where you want it every single time repeatedly is a little trickier than you'd expect. So also getting that to be in a package that we can easily ship and is gonna be reliably already ready to go, set up, aligned out of the box for you is also kind of an important criteria. We'll be doing some various tests, just kind of looking at the planarity of the working bed to make sure focus doesn't change depending on where you are in the working area. We'll be looking at some of the mirror alignment to see how easy that is to tune, um, what parts might need adjustment, things like that. And then we'll also be obviously looking at performance, both in the sense of ventilation, other aspects like that, and other things like shear speed and acceleration and any of the motion tuning we can do on this machine, um, seeing how much we can kind of squeeze out of this. And uh, obviously, lastly, we'll be doing a lot of reliability testing. So that includes things like looking at the lifespan of the tube. Like any other part on most laser systems, uh, the CO2 glass tube will have a finite life. So we're just gonna be checking and making sure that everything aligns with our quality specifications and ensuring that our laser tube will last you your machine's lifetime. You can see we have this prototype behind us. Um, obviously, the main purpose of this is kind of just serving as a bench, a test bench setup that we can use to kind of learn and test different components, um, going through that whole kind of quality assurance side of things and seeing kind of what works, what doesn't work, learning a bit more. So obviously, we'll have a lot of production changes. Uh, well, changes for pre-production and things like that might include the mounting orientation for the glass tube. An obvious difference is you can have a tube moving on your y-axis gantry, or you can have it uh, stationary like most laser cutters do. So there's some advantages to both, but that's something we'll be dig digging into a bit more. Our main focus is basically just making sure, again, this will be packaged and shipped reliably so that you won't have to do any kind of alignment as the end customer and making sure that it's uh, reliable for the lifetime of the product as well. We'll also just be exploring sensor types to increase the accuracy, um, different form factors uh, for the actual enclosure itself and different form factors for the electronics. So right now we just have everything kind of open and it's a bit of a, a, a hornet's nest of wires, mm -hmm. but in the future, we're gonna be playing with different types of uh, enclosure systems just for the electronics, whether it's uh, something that gets built directly into the main enclosure, something that hangs off the side of the enclosure. Um, we're gonna play with different kind of aspects of that. Just to clarify, this is really just a kind of test bench setup. Um, you can see we've got a lot of wooden panels here. Obviously, you don't wanna have a CO2 laser capable of creating flames uh, made out of wood. It's kind of like a straw house sort of deal. And you can see we've got a lot of 3D printed parts, some things that are a little bit uh, thrown together, kind of scrappy. Like I said, the main purpose of this is just to have a kind of test bench where we can throw parts on, take parts off, swap things out, try new things out, experiment a bit. And uh, yeah, like we're quite early on in development, but you'll see this kind of take a bit more shape and get a little bit more refined as time goes on. So yeah, stay tuned for that. So this acts as our bare minimum. Everything works, everything works well, uh, but now we can start to upgrade things. So some of the things that we've learned, even just playing with the assembly of this is going to help you for when you're doing assembly, when you're doing maintenance, when you're replacing a part or something like that, when you're trying to fine tune the uh, alignment of uh, the mirrors to get your lens in focus or your beam in focus. So a lot of that stuff we're going through right now. And then once we have a new pre-production model or next prototype, uh, it'll be a lot closer to what you guys will actually see. We have met with a few testing companies and we had a few meetings with their engineers and things are looking very promising. I think we have a pretty good handle on what certain types of tests that we need in order to comply with FCC, FDA, European Union, and uh, make sure that we are good to ship this in Canada, United States, and worldwide. That's where the bulk of the mystery in terms of a timeline comes from. Because the testing is so important, if we fail one part of the test and we have to come back and redesign certain things, that's just something that needs to get done before we can open anything up for uh, pre-orders or even beta testing. We'd like to get things ready and open for a pre-order uh, end of summer. Right? I'm gonna give a very kind of loose range there, end of summer. As soon as our testing is done, as soon as our test reports are done and we pass, we'll be able to give you guys a much clearer uh, 
roadmap outline and timeline in terms of when you guys can pre-order and when you guys can actually uh, when we'll actually be ready to ship these these co2 lasers our goal with this product is to create a very high quality accessible co2 laser for the hobby community and that includes pricing so we are looking at pricing around twenty five hundred dollars canadian upwards to thirty five hundred dollars canadian as we lock down a proper bomb and all of our costs associated with manufacturing this product um, we will have more firm pricing for you guys Guys, but I do like that range because it's not too expensive. It makes the product sustainable so we can continue to iterate and continue to improve uh, on the lifespan of this product. So we're very excited to kind of introduce this to the market because hobbyists ourselves, when we're at home, we're just hobbyists and it's a product that I've always wanted. I used my first CO2 laser about six years ago and I kind of fell in love. And uh, so when I designed the laser beam, it was very interesting because I got to bring a little bit of that love to the CNC router market and give you guys this add on a little bit of usage of the laser uh, with your products, because that's what I love to do. And now I'm getting the opportunity to actually create this specific CO2 laser product. And hopefully if you're as interested in lasers as I am, or you just like making cool stuff uh, and you could use this product, you'll be just as interested. Sign up for our email newsletter because we will be putting out periodical updates through our uh, blog and that will get sent out in our Ultra Beam CO2 laser uh, email newsletter list. So that link should be in the description. You can find it and sign up for it to stay up to date. You know, stay tuned. We'll have probably another update in about a month or so. Um, just detailing how this prototype continues evolving and any of the progress we make on a more pre-production ready unit. So stay tuned for that. Thanks. Thanks.